Hi, this is Dr. K from my medical school, and today we're going to discuss the recent results from the ischemia trial. Because there's nothing I love more than when the news does a bad job at explaining a good scientific study. Please make sure to watch all our educational content on our YouTube channel, iMedical School, and listen to our podcast on iTunes and Google Play. If you like what you see, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> A few weeks ago, results were presented from the ischemia trial that received a lot of headlines. The name ischemia is an acronym for the International Study of Comparative Health Effectiveness with Medical Invasive Approaches. Yeah, quite a mouthful. Unfortunately, the headlines regarding the study did not convey its findings accurately. The ischemia study asked whether in a stable patient with at least moderate ischemia, if an invasive strategy with heart catheterization improves quality of life and symptoms over medical management alone? This is a pretty important question because invasive procedures like heart catheterizations and cardiac stenting have risks. In the ischemia trial, they included patients who had at least moderate ischemia on a stress test. A stress test is when the heart is challenged to work hard and pump quickly. This is done by asking you to run on a treadmill with EKG leads monitoring the heart, or for those who cannot run, giving a medication to make the heart pump faster. Since the heart is like any other muscle, the harder it works, the more oxygen it requires. If the demand exceeds the supply due to blockages in the coronary arteries, which are the arteries that provide the heart oxygen, this results in ischemia, or damage due to too little oxygen. Specific criteria was set to define if someone had moderate to severe ischemia on a stress test. If someone did have moderate to severe ischemia, they took the Seattle Angina Questionnaire, or SAQ. Angina is chest pain or discomfort that is caused by cardiac ischemia, typically described as chest pain that worsens with physical activity. SAQ assesses how frequent their heart symptoms are, their quality of life, and their physical limitations. The higher the score, the better the overall they were doing and the less severe their cardiac symptoms were. Each patient was then randomized into an invasive strategy with cardiac catheterization and optimal medical therapy versus optical medical therapy alone. 5,179 patients were included in the study with 2,591 patients randomized to conservative medical therapy and 2,588 randomized to invasive therapy. After several participants were excluded or lost to follow-up, about 2,300 remained in the medical therapy arm and roughly about 2,300 remained in the invasive treatment arm. All patients were followed for 36 months and each patient filled out a Seattle angina questionnaire at specific times during their follow-up. Individuals who had angina at least once a month or more were found to have an improvement in their SAQ score with the invasive approach compared to medical therapy alone. For those without any angina symptoms and only moderate to severe ischemia on a stress test, the invasive approach was equivalent to medical therapy in improving SAQ scores. So what do these results mean? And does this mean that heart catheterizations and cardiac stents are equivalent to medicines in treating heart disease like the news says? Absolutely not. The ischemia study is an impressive study in how it was conducted, but also needs to be put in the proper context. First and foremost, none of the patients included were having active heart attacks. It is clear that anyone experiencing an acute coronary syndrome, like a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction or an ST elevation myocardial infarction, STEMI, needs a heart catheterization to help restore proper blood flow to the heart. The ischemia study specifically looked at those who had either chronic symptoms or who had no cardiac symptoms. Also, because the study included asymptomatic individuals, this also skewed the results as clearly these patients were not very sick. Even with this context, the ischemia study showed that patients with at least monthly symptoms and who had at least moderate ischemia in a cardiac stress test do better with an invasive approach. However, for patients with no cardiac symptoms but who have moderate to severe ischemia on a stress test, 
the benefit of an invasive approach compared to medical therapy is similar. I think this highlights the fact that symptoms are a key component in the severity of cardiac disease. So what is the main takeaway from this study? Despite the headlines, cardiac catheterization still remains a life-saving measure for those who have acute coronary syndromes. The ischemia study has identified that those with no cardiac symptoms, but who have moderate to severe ischemia on a stress test, can consider cardiac catheterization or medical therapy as treatments after the risks and benefits of both choices are discussed. Well, that was a brief review of the results of the ischemia study and its true meaning. If you liked our video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for any future videos, please leave them down below. This is Dr. K, and I'll see you next time.